IPv4 only had these 32-bit addresses that have run out. And so that's why we're all trying to move to IPv6, and it's not going well. But here's the wacky thing. IPv3 actually support 128-bit addresses. In the 1970s, we had 120-bit addresses, but they spent so long arguing about it that Vint and Surf wanted to just get this thing going. I talked before about IPv5, but now a lot of people are asking what happened to IPv1, v2, v3. There was no IPv1. Originally, it was written as just one protocol called TCP. They just wrote it as a paper. They never built it. And they got all this feedback on it. And then they came up with TCP2. And they never implemented that either. They finally say, okay, we're really going to build this thing. And they realize they made a mistake, making TCP the, the single protocol that gets packets across the internet and delivers them reliably. Too much of one protocol. So they started splitting it. So the third version was still called TCP3. There were two layers. There was a transport control protocol and there was the lower layer. And in the lower layer, they talked about the internet header. It wasn't officially called internet protocol yet. This one actually got built, got programmed. People start casually calling it internet protocol. So when they decided that splitting was absolutely the right thing to do, in version four, IPv4, which was the first version of IP for real, and TCP4, so they were a matching pair. It was a one-time experiment that Vinton Surf ran at ARPA to try to network a bunch of computers. Got used from the 1970s all the way basically till today. And that's what took over and became the internet as we know it. In conclusion, I want you to subscribe.